changed. And part of that was we went from a number of miles on the road to num we went from the number of vehicles that were traveling the road to the number of actual vehicle miles. And that really hurt the cities in the state. Um, that's one of the things that I, mean, I certainly think that that should be changed back. But I mean, that, I mean, but that, that is one of the things that you know, we can certainly find out the, the impact of that. But there's no question. You just have to drive around New York City New York to see that I'm sure Allentown is not much different. You just the, the city, falling apart about five miles The liquid back. fuels allocation to cities is just dramatically lower as a percentage, not just on real dollars, but as a percentage than what it would have been you know, before, that, before that, that change happened. And ours has shrunk, I think, every year, our liquid fuels. So, I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't know how they expect us to govern. They don't. Oh, they don't care. Well, that's easy. They don't care. I'm glad we solved that. Well, <laughs> all right. I'm out. You can all go home now. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for coming by. My pleasure. Sorry, I got stuck with 22. Speaking of. Speaking <laughs> of tra you, you missed the infrastructure. Tra tra infrastructure on it. I heard um, Ed Rendell speak on infrastructure at the National League of Cities in December. Wow. He was really good. He really sends it home, but it's not really good. He was very good about it. You, I, I'm, right on. I'm still amazed by this. The governor sets up a transportation commission. Now, I'm not sitting there saying I'm as sure as... recommendations. Yeah, I mean, but the idea was when you set up one of those things and they recommend stuff, my instinct was that at least a majority of that stuff, he's going to say, well, and it's, I thought it was, you know, that's why he did it. They gave it to him, and then it's like, you know, there's crickets for a couple of weeks. And I was like, well, maybe he's not actually, like, he can't, but we kept saying, like, he can't not be for it. You find out, yeah. I mean, or at least no push. But he, hasn't, he hasn't pushed any of his priorities from my limited understanding. I mean, he isn't getting behind what he does. Superman, Superman. Thank you. Yeah. Great holiday. You do awesome. Yeah, I mean, is that is that the, that he just he seems to be so just days days ago when just, it comes to legislation. Well, just take the, the the voucher. Yeah, yeah. He had made that you know that was going to be his priority for the fall, and you're down to like the last two weeks, and we didn't know this time. You just found out through the I guess the, the capital wire the capital okay. story that he was in Philadelphia the day that they were rallying the votes. Now, I just yeah, I mean, I, I can just say that I always tell people say what you want about Ed Rendell, and but did you not know where he stood? <laughs> I mean, and he, he was out there slugging away at everything. I think he was pushing issues until he was out. I think he was having a press conference up until two days before he left office. He viewed it as he was the governor, and he was going to push an agenda, and he knew people disagreed with some of it, but he would even say, if you disagree with my agenda, get up and fight for, fight yeah. for what you believe. But he had an agenda. Right. He had an action plan to go along with that agenda. This guy, I mean, I was, Ben and I talked about this before. His agenda is stop government. I love no, but he, he hasn't made any. His agenda was reduce the size of government. Even asking you to say he's going to reduce the size of legislature. I mean, he hasn't talked about any of those things that he talked about that got him elected, because he was saying the right thing that people wanted to hear. Honorado was saying the things that he was going to do that was going to help. Right. People like to hear cut, 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 cut. Well, he didn't cut the vehicle fleet. He didn't cut. He hasn't cut any of that. All he's cut is public education. Right, that's all. I mean, he's cut public education terribly. I mean, it, it, and it's fallen down to the local, the local school districts. You know, where our school district laid off seventy teachers two years ago, and they're looking at layoffs again next year. I mean, Ed went through the same thing, and Ed has a. Fortunately, we don't have just an urban school. Yeah. We have a you know an area school district. I mean, Ed and, that and Bethlehem. Them. Yeah, Ed and Bethlehem. I, I don't know how they do it. Yeah, no, it, that's, and that's what happened. York went from four years no school tax increase, making progress to just stop the I think we actually went three years without a tax increase, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. 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 Then we went up with eight bills. Right, yeah, and now they're going up again this time around, going up significantly. Yeah. Here's a good point on that. Which so puts a real pressure on us as municipalities. Because we can't. We can't. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're usually after the school district. Right? 40% of the city of Allentown? Well, not to mention property. when they get their tax increase bills, even if we didn't increase their taxes, they say, hey, how come my taxes keep city. going up? Well, when you're the mayor, you're, 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 you're the guy, and I know that because of how many people, you know, I mean, just say they don't know their individual school board members, but they know the mayor. Exactly. And I just, even on the cut, 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 I mean, I have, it was very good campaign rep. It was. Very, I mean, there's no question about and it. And he hit it. And there was, um, there was a gentleman. There was I a, think he was in the valley, what, twice? Well, and what we did see him, he was on the camera. Remember? Yeah. Two times he was in the camera. Remember, he 
showed up there. You went to that one bakery. It's the only time I remember coming to Leah Valley. That bakery in Whitehall. Do you remember that? Yeah. You went to that Star. one family bakery. Egypt Star, maybe? Yeah, Egypt Star. Egypt Star. Egypt Star. Egypt Star. That was the only time I remember it being in the valley. There was... Um, there was a, I'm not even sure what he went there for. It's going to be a dope <laughs> sweet bun. Well, there's a program in the Department of Labor and Industry where they, there was a federal requirement of some permitting that some type of small business. And I know this because a constituent just contacted me. And he said, I get this you know, nasty gram email and he said, why did the Department of Labor stop this program? It's now i got to go through the federal government to get this permit. It's going to cost me more money. I didn't know what it was, so we checked with labor and industry. Of course, they came back and said, well, yeah, he's right. We used to do that, but because of the cuts in the state budget, we, had to, we have less people now, so that's a program that had to go. And the thing was, this is one of the gentlemen that was asking me to support Corbett's budget because of the <laughs> cut. And I say, look, I, I'm not saying that to pick on the gentleman, other than when I went back and said, and it's like, well, I, you know, when you hear there's a billion in waste, fraud, and abuse, and everyone's saying it, People say, oh, maybe that's true. We, well, if there really was a line item that said waste, fraud, and abuse, $1 billion, I, I propose cutting it. I mean, you know, but now as people are finding out, there was Thank real God. stuff that was in there. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, in, in talking... We, in, we, we would question your... Yeah, right, right. Well, I think it would be like... I'd it would be, sort of, you know, be like, it, it would be a rush to see who would get that bill introduced first. <laughs> it's, I, in, just in having conversations with Representative Mann's legislative assistants, I'm sure you know this infinitely better than I do, they're talking about how when they process stuff through Department of Labor or Department of Welfare or something like that, how stuff that used to take two weeks, you know, it takes three months. Yeah. And just the backlogs are just out of out of control. And say, and little government, here you are. Pennsylvania now has the fewest amount of state employees per capita in the country. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's actually, and think about it, Pennsylvania has about 75,000 employees. Yeah. <laughs> Not quite right, Kara. That's, that's a false statistic. And the um, state of Kansas has 42,000. I, I could finish. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but think about it. Kansas, we're, st we're five times roughly the size of Kansas, and they have 42,000 state employees. We have 75,000. South Carolina has 65,000 state employees. And I pro pro pick, up those, pick on those two, not because I think they're doing bad jobs in state government, but those are not considered left-wing liberal right. states. I'm pretty sure Governor Brownback in Kansas would have issues if he said he was a lefty. Right. I think, yeah, I think exactly. you got a point about yeah, that. So, but that gives you an idea. So states that aren't even considered left-wing, left that's that's your number of state employees. There's plenty of places you can cut and just not do it. It's hurting. From, the, from his inaugural address, I knew we were in trouble. I thought I was listening to a Memorial Day speech. There was nothing set in stone, nothing, 100 days came and went. Everybody has that traditional 100 days, you know? Nothing Nothing came out of his office. I'm like, we're in for trouble. We are in for a long haul. The only thing good we got done was the texting mail, which was my bill for five years. And that almost got messed up in the end, but not, not his fault. But. It's your fault that I'm not allowed to text and drive anymore? It is, it is, it is my fault, yes. I did my best to stop you. You talking sure. on the phone and driving <laughs> is scary enough. <laughs> you driving is scary enough. <laughs> nice. nice. Anybody have any other questions, thoughts, ideas? Does that count for emailing too? <laughs> yes, no. no it's electronic communications. We, we're trying to pull people in. There's one of the loopholes out there. Well, thank you everyone for coming out. And I, I mean, for those that celebrate, have a Merry Christmas too. So you wrote your menorah on the right day, where ours is tonight. Last night was Bethlehem, ours is tonight. Rabbi, we got it. Happy Festival.